So I've gotten a lot of questions lately about sulfur-less antique muzzle-loading propellant, sulfur-free powder, that is. Now, sulfur is a pretty important component in making antique muzzle-loading propellant, but as I understand it, it's the only component that you can leave out and still get something that resembles antique muzzle-loading propellant. So throughout the course of history, there have been armies and commanders and entire governments and countries that have gone to great lengths to obtain sulfur for their powder because it's that important. Now, one that comes to mind was uh, in the 1500s when Cortez was in Mexico fighting the Aztecs. They had either used up or lost a bunch of their powder, and he had to send uh, some guys up to a volcano, and they had to rappel down into a volcano to get sulfur for their powder that they needed to make. So it's important, and there's a reason why. Sulfur serves two purposes when it comes to antique muzzle-loading propellant. The first being that it lowers the ignition temperature by a considerable amount. And the second is it's an accelerator and a fuel, meaning that it, it does burn. And the reason why is it lowers the ignition temperature is it actually catches fire or starts to ignite first before the potassium nitrate and charcoal does. The sulfur lights off first. So it acts kind of as an accelerator. But you can make it without it. This particular batch is 70% potassium nitrate, 30% Pacific Willow charcoal, and it's milled for 12 hours and then compressed and corned and granulated that way, which is how I make all my powder nowadays. And here are some open air tests. This first test here is just the mill powder straight out of the mill after milling for 10 or 12 hours. And this next one is the powder after it's been compressed and corned. It seemed to work just fine. It almost looks purple. It does. Sulfur less. That wasn't bad. So as you can see, it actually looks halfway respectable because a lot of the other videos I've seen of sulfur-free black powder on YouTube is rather pathetic. And like all the other tests, we're going to run it through my Kibler SMR 45 with 50 grains of powder, a 20 thousandths patch, and a 440 round ball, and all of the shots are primed with the same powder they're charged with. So here it goes. Okay, so here's the sulfur list. Wow, it really loses some chutzpah with no sulfur. Okay, shot two with the sulfur less. That didn't seem bad at all. 11.35? Yeah, duplicate 11.35. There we go. Okay. And by the way, if you're interested, uh, that was pathetic. Oh, smoked like a pig. 84. Okay. Here we go. Uh, what is this? This is sulfur less. Okay, our third shot. Oh, that does sound pathetic. 11.22. Like your old freaking air gun. Dirty, rotten wow. son of a... I don't know what that gun sounds like to me. But that's it. 11. So here's the breakdown. After throwing out our one duplicate shot and our other one that read 58, we got an average of 1103 with a max spread of 51, which is actually not too terrible. And it even flashes halfway decent. Now, this still is, in comparison to my other powders, is not exactly great, being five and 600 feet per second slower than my Willow and Alder Buckthorn powder. But I guess, again, in a pinch, you could make it work. 
Now, just to try and get the power level up, I tried a shot with 75 grains, so that's a 50% increase, and here's what we got. So, based on that test, we can see that it'll work. And if you're using it in a muzzle loader, it's not that bad because you could just up your powder charge by 50, 75, or even 100% and get pretty decent velocities. But what if you're dealing with something where you have limited case capacity, like a cartridge or this 1860 Army? Okay, so 25 grain sulfur-free black powder. Sounds a little hotter. 576, that did sound hotter. So, how did we do? Mm, less than ideal, that's for sure. Now, one of the things I noticed with the 1860 Army is I had a really wide spread between velocities. And the first try, it went, let's see, 505 and had a max spread of 107, uh, which again, not too great. I tried another one, it went 495 and had a max spread of 101. And my theory on why that is, is because when you don't have sulfur in your powder, when you're corning it, that doesn't make really hard grains. The reason is sulfur, when corning black powder under a bunch of pressure, it actually vulcanizes that puck and makes it hard, like hard as a rock, like almost like ceramic. And you break it up into pieces, well, those grains are hard as a rock. So even though I still went through the same process, without the sulfur, those grains are really soft. And my theory is, when you really crank in on that loading lever on an 1860 Army, varying amounts of compression are going to give you different velocities like that. That's my theory anyway. It's a lot easier for me to get the same amount of compression with my loading or my uh, ramrod on my SMR. That's my theory. But either way, pretty lousy performance. Uh, just for sport, I'll show you the same thing in the 1860 with 25 grains of Swiss. 25 grains, 3F Swiss. Big difference. So that's how it's supposed to go. That averaged 915 feet per second and had a max spread of 80. As you can see, the performance is right up there where it's supposed to be. So as far as the sulfur is concerned, pretty lousy compared to that. It did a lot better through my SMR than it did in the revolver. So what does all that mean? I can tell you what it means to me. If I was ever in a situation where I had no sulfur and I couldn't obtain any for any reason, I'd be looking for a volcano to climb into to get some. So, as usual folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you did think it sucked, well, go make your own damn video.